Okay. All right. Hey there, Ryan here. Uh, in case you're new to these streams, I'm the founder of Vertex School, uh, where we train uh, game artists and uh, people looking to learn this new creative tech. I'm a little worried about this camera kind of being right on the edge, but I think we're fine. All right, there's a shadow over there anyways. Um, so what we're going to look at today is this. Okay, and for some of you guys, you know, you might be totally clear on this. For others of you, this is a, a mystery, you know, to some extent. And the goal I have for us today is to demystify this because um, it shouldn't be a mystery. It is not a talent thing. It is a very technical thing. And when you understand the technical components, um, that's when you're able to kind of go through and massage it and make it work for you. So I'm going to give you a couple of my key concepts today. These are the concepts that I've been teaching people for the last four years over at Vertex. These are concepts that, you know, they make the difference between a job and not a job. You know, they're not, a, they're not an insignificant thing. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in today and investing this time, really. Uh, to kind of master your craft and learn a little bit more, uh, you know, and pick up a few more notes and things of that uh, nature. It's a real credit to you that you're doing that. And so let's stop for a second and make sure you guys can hear me. So give me a quick yes, no, if you can hear me, uh, both in Facebook and in um, YouTube. Manir, Jordan, Pitar, hey, Lou. Yes, I will show you the secrets. Okay. Hey, Ryan. All right, Ryan's there in Facebook. And uh, Sandra, how are you? Uh, YouTube, can you hear me? Just let me know as soon as you can, and I'll keep, start moving forward. Okay, the stream health seems to be pretty good. Yep. We're in good shape. Yes, yes. All right, thanks, Firewalk with me. And Patar Manir, thank you, guys. Daniel, thanks. Jason, thanks. Tito, thanks. Okay. All right. So um, there's something that I made sure to uh, give you guys before we did this. Let's look uh, right here. I'm going to go into the live. So if you're watching this live on this page, uh, right below this, it says download the simple rendering checklist. This is what we're going to walk through today. And it's really important important because there's so many things that you got to keep track of that having this checklist like this is very valuable I have found it is what I use when I look at people's work it's what I use when I go to town on these and I try to render this it's a procedure it works every time and it, you know almost every time unless we forget something because trust me I get nervous doing uh, conversations on rendering like I get really nervous because the difference between good and great can be like, you know, if you're tired, if you're seeing it, somebody's like me who's kind of, you know, this pressure to perform and, I'm, and, and I could just try to get something done, but I could be off on a, um, on a unit by like 0.1% and not, not 0.1, 0 0.1, the setting could be off by 0.1 value. It's the difference between great and uh, why'd I pay attention to him, right? So I get nervous because there are these things, but I've done it a, a lot, so it should today be a relatively straightforward, pretty simple process for me to document for you. But just know that going into it, that when you're doing this on your own and you don't have anybody else that you're working with, this is something where um, just point one value off could be why it doesn't look good in your eyes. So there's a trick that I want to make sure that you guys are aware of before. Remember, I've been, I have a theme here of the brain is an unreliable um, narrator. Uh, it doesn't know what it doesn't know. Fine, fair enough. I know plenty of people that are like, I don't know. But your brain lies to you. It lies to me. And it says, I know, and makes stuff up. The brain's always sitting there saying, I know what that is. I know, because that's its job is to define things. And, you know, it does the best it can. But when you look at something, you might feel one way about it today and entirely different about it the next day. Like, have you ever 
just thought that you did this most amazing work and you're like, this is the most important, this is that's amazing, I love this. Then you wake up the next morning and you're like, shit, where did I post that? Um, okay, and then you're rushing over there to delete it from all the places that you posted in your euphoria, right? <laughs> And it only takes a couple times of that to be like, all right, I'm just not going to give in to this euphoria. Or you make the other decision and you say, oh, well, I must not have talent, right? And um, let me make sure that we're not editing. Can view it. Perfect. So it has nothing to do with your talent. It has everything to do with the fact that your brain's lying to you because it's just trying to make you better. And it just doesn't know when to quit. So what you have to do over time is start to discover the systems and the processes that allow you to bypass your brain and um, you know get results that are dependable. And one of the systems, this is what I started this, this part of it out to say, was you have to sleep on it. You've all heard it. They say, go, go, sleep on it. Well, sleeping on it is beyond essential, my friend. What you need to do with your work is create it, get to the point where you feel like you can't change anything and you're not quite sure, and just stop. One of my teachers, Al Gurry, used to say one of his most important jobs is telling students when to stop because they don't know when it's good. They're developing the taste. So they'll work it, and they'll work it to the point where they just destroy it. Because nobody's willing to give up on the work, right? You, you work on a painting and, you, and then Al Gurry comes by 30 minutes into it and it says, you're done. And I'm like, you know, I got two more hours on this. Why am I done? And he's like, no, you're done. Put it away. Start another one. Okay? You and I, in the beginning, we don't know what good is. Your brain doesn't know. And if it set, thinks it knows, it's just full of crap. So ignore it. And what you have to do is work to a certain point and then you stop, you sleep on it, you look at it the next day and you see from that perspective did anything change. But the real big tip here is that when you're doing this, the really wise thing is to work on your piece until you feel like it's not right, like there's, it's, it's not entirely right. And that's usually the sweet spot. That's actually where it's the most accurate. Because the brain you have today can't say yes to it but the brain you're going to have tomorrow is going to wake up in the morning and be like yeah that's right you nailed it man that's what you got to do try to find that place where you're slightly uncomfortable and learn how to stop and let it exist in that stage okay let me check the comments here real quick uh ibrahim awesome gabo awesome all right looking over here at facebook okay great all right so that's Number one, keep that in mind, especially when you're doing realistic skin because you're going to go into this and you're going to, I mean, you're just going to get it wrong. Very few people I know I've taught, I can't actually think of one, uh, get it right, right out of the gate. Everybody struggles. Everybody does it for like about a week, two weeks. And the big thing that they're doing is not actually the settings. They're all right here. They're like right there. I gave them to you. It's all there. Okay. Now, of course, there's other parts to this, like you know, making sure that the map is accurate and all that stuff. But we'll 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 talk a little bit about that. I'm not gonna go over everything. It's you know, I don't want you to think that this is just something where it's like, hey, two hours, we're done. Hour, hour and a half, we're done. It's it's it's, it's a process. Okay. I'm not gonna do eyes. I don't want you to think eyes are something where it's just like, yeah, I'll just do 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 the eye because I'm awesome. It's not like that. It takes time. Okay. So give your brain time to adjust commit to a process not a result are you guys all willing to commit to a process and not a result give me a yes no and i'll remind you if you're committed to a result your brain is an unreliable narrator so it's going to think this result is good but it's full of crap so if you're committed to a result you're always going to be behind the eight ball you're always going to be less than Whereas if you commit to a process and to working and, you know, to, to having control over the way that you operate, you will excel faster um, and your work will be better. That's, that's my goal. Okay. Uh, Petar is saying, I work until I'm beyond exhausted with it. I mean, you know, that, it's natural. Um, and when you know what you're doing, that's fine. Okay. It's totally fine, right? As long as you're saving out iterations. And it's fine to work until you're exhausted, but again, save out iterations, okay? So that you can go back and you can say, okay, that was the right one, and this is the point where I screwed everything else up, okay? 
if you do that, you're good. You're going to make it. All right. Hail to the process. All right, so let's go in, and um, there's a couple of things that we might look at uh, today. Did I already export those? Yes. We might look at some simple processes here, but we're going to start um, by recreating you know, this example. Now, the model that we have here, we're going to start, we have two different distinct elements. Okay, One of them is, is that we have a low resolution, and within that low resolution, we've also got our UV map. Okay, now this gets confusing for a, a lot of folks as they try to figure this out. But the best case scenario is when you have a low resolution with the UV that is also your high resolution. So this is also my high resolution, and it's got all my pores and all of this. Now again, this sculpt was by Abdurrahman, and he. Uh, is the one who's kind of building this digital avatar, this um, Petal Town influencer that project that we're working on right now. And I'm going to unpack a lot of those pieces uh, later on. Um, but right now, I'm just going to show you kind of the, the steps, and I, and I have the good fortune of, of working with an amazing sculptor uh, and look dev artist that's kind of prepared these things for us. So this is my high resolution. It's all my beautiful work, beautiful pores, not my work, Aldoraman's work, and my low resolution. Okay, the way it, it's it's not in the purview right now for me to explain how to do that. It's something we go through in the boot camp. And remember, if you're wondering how you get yourself um, access to that, just under uh, above the character artist live, you can learn about the project that is coming up, the character artist boot camp live. Right, and tomorrow is the last day to enroll in this. And uh, so I really hope you guys, if you're interested in this, get in, it's 15 day money back kind of deal. You can't, you can't really lose, right? So if you're interested in this, pop in, okay? Now, with this piece, what were we looking at? Uh, we were looking at the ZBrush land. So with this piece, we have this topology and this topology is used for everything right here. I mean, I think even uh, the Ryan. Let me see if I've got the I Ryan in here. Yeah. Uh, which one's the newest? That one's the newest. I don't think I have the latest ZTL. But hopefully this will work. kill the floor so I don't have those things. Okay, so there's all this detail in this. And, and I'm going to share with you guys how we got this detail. Uh, um, because it's really important to understand, you don't actually hand sculpt a lot of stuff in today's industry. This is incredibly labor intensive, incredibly artist specific. It doesn't go at scale. And so I'll talk to you guys about that once we're done with this rendering conversation. Okay, but if I take the polygon count all the way down, and I look, pretty much the exact same setup that we have here with a beer. Okay, that's just the, her name um, for this. You can see uh, we've got right there, right there, right there, right there. We got right there, right there. Okay, same UV, same process. The low resolution is just shrunk wrapped onto every single one of these sculpts and is adjusted via uh, Z wrap. And um, if you don't have it, it's going to be an essential part of your process here. So Z wrap is amazing. You can also get their wrap, and you'll see James Busby doing some um, some work and talking about that. He has to do a lot of work inside of those um, those applications. So he's of course using you know the larger program. Um, but ZWrap works, you know, for most of us. What happened to the head? Oh, that was the beer head, not that one. And I want to go lower. There we go. The 12 million, I don't want to risk that today. Okay, so we start with this. We start with a low poly, a high poly that is the same geometry, um, basically, same UVs, 
and we have all this poor level detail uh, that's established. Now, once we have that, um, you know, this is kind of you know the key to the equation. Uh, I'm going to also assume. Let's go into Photoshop that you've got a, a, a texture map, right? Uh, then, and, and I'll show you a process without or, or developing a texture map a little bit later, but let's assume that you've got all these things, okay? Then let's assume that you've also got, uh, let's go through here, let's say you've got a roughness map. Let's say you also have a spec map. And you could have one of two things. You could also have uh, you could have a, a displacement map, which is the first thing that I had. Where's my displacement map? There it is. My displacement map is an EXR file, just a really good file for 32-bit. 32-bit, you actually can't you can't use your eyes to see it. It doesn't it doesn't make sense to us. But don't sweat that. And let's go window arrange match all. All right, so. The uh, color map, this is a good color map, I think. The color map has some poor information in it, but notice the color variation. And this is going to be something I do a lot. I'm going to grab over here, but I want you to look over here onto the far right-hand side. You see where the black value says 57? Saturation says 52. I'm looking to see variation, so I'm going to go into the light area, dark area. Grab that. To that. Notice how in the lightest areas it's 5651, in the dark areas 5652. Is that like a small variation? I mean, yeah. This is one of the most important lessons that you have to learn, you know, in this conversation is the small variations is where it's at. 99% of you are going to make the mistake of having your variations be too extreme and you know and you're going to it's, the work is going to suffer because of that so you can have these uh, lower pieces be like just like that where they're just a little bit too much brighter that's a, a 77 versus the bright area is let's go right up here an 80 right and small shifts and changes like that make a big difference so you want to make sure that your map doesn't have too much poor detail, but it might have a little, okay? And then in your roughness map, with your roughness map, roughness is really like a, a zone control. You're controlling the different zones and having shinier areas like the nose, shinier areas like the cheek, not my cheeks because they're covered with fur. Uh, I don't, the eyebrow shouldn't be dark like this. This is actually the opposite of what you want. Um, and then the lips are a little bit darker, uh, you know, and on from there, right? But the one thing to understand about this, and it's really important, is that the general roughness value, look at where that is. Do you see what that number is? Like here in the cheek, it's gonna go 34. Bridge of the nose, 31, okay? Down here in the lips, it's gonna go 31. Okay, but if you come out here, in general, the base default uh, roughness for the face, I like to put at 45. And, and, and if you're in Substance Painter, my roughness map, I set that to 0.45. If you look at the roughness, that's, that's our starting point. Once you've got that as a starting point, there's a lot more that we can do. But we start here, and then we will make some areas darker, which will make them shinier. And we'll make some areas lighter, which will make them less shiny. And you have to understand that about roughness, is roughness is basically the opposite of shiny. It's either rough or shiny. What we as humans are thinking is we're thinking shiny, because we're thinking specularity, we're thinking all that stuff on somebody's face, right? That's what's really important. So like if we look at my face, one of the most important parts about, you know, everything that we're kind of seeing here, where's my scroll bar? There it is. Pores are illuminated by specularity. A lot of people think pores are, um, are, are the cavity, 
So you actually make the pores black and you know, you do want to darken pores. But this is one of those reversal things is where you sculpt something without sculpting it, you sculpt the area around it. So when you want to reveal a pore, you don't actually focus on the pore. What you do is you focus on the light that hits around it and that highlight, that specularity, that's what creates the illusion of skin. And that is one of the key concepts to what we're talking about today and to this process that um, I'm illuminating, okay? Because as you go through the process of developing this, that it'll start where you actually don't see any specularity. And that's how we start to bring life to the work, okay? So let's look here. These are zones, okay? Now this, you might look at this. This is a specular map and You'll see tutorials that'll go all directions on this, okay? Some tutorials will say don't put the specularity, or sorry, don't put the pore detail in your specularity. So, I mean, you can see the pore detail in the specularity here. It's pretty intense, right? Um, and you'll have some that do. Don't do it, do it. Don't do it, do it. I don't know, right? And to be honest with you, I work both ways. Um, so, you know, a lot of it has to depend on if you've got access to a spec map. Um, and you know and what's the fastest way so keep in mind you know whenever you're doing this there's a difference between doing the job and getting the job now my focus for the last several years has been getting the job not doing the job and i'll explain that here in a second but it's important that you understand that when you are looking to get a job you're looking to change your career here you don't want to go out there and create a whole bunch of low resolution game props and say, hey, I can make it suck too. Nobody's interested in, in that. What they're interested in is looking at your portfolio and being inspired to have you join the team. That's what they're interested in. So you don't create super low poly props. I don't instruct my students to do that. I think that's you know a tragedy create something that you know would be done in a year or two years it's a little it's just a really good piece and forgive yourself for going a little over in the polygon a little bit over in the texture distribution because you want to be aiming for the future there's that saying that from wayne gretzky that you, you don't skate to where the puck is you skate to where the puck is going to be which really just means like aim towards the future and be forward focused not focused on the past. Because if you're looking at um, game art on ArtStation or art dumps on ArtStation and you're like, oh, they did this, they did that. Well, they did that three years ago. That's all, that's three years old. Like they did that art and then it just took that long to get that thing out. So if they're starting a pipeline today, they are not looking back three years. They're looking forward three years because that's where the production is. They're looking to the future, to the console of the future, to the pipeline of the future, you know, even if a year or so. So keep that in mind. And it comes down to this question of like, do I put pores in the specularity or not? Um, when you're doing the job, your art lead will tell you. They'll have it all set up, okay? And if you don't have an art lead, well, you, you got bigger problems. It means that you know, you're working for a smaller company and this might be a chance for you to shine, but it's also gonna be a chance for you to fall on your face and you gotta be careful, strategic. Try to find those jobs that support you in the beginning, don't you know, leave you on your own. But almost all game studios will have some element where they will try to see how you perform on your own. That's just part of this industry. There's no labor shortage. It's part of the way they work that they'll bring in 30 people over a month and three people might stay. You know, hopefully more than that. But you get the idea, right? It's like if you can't stay with them, that's okay. You get out, the next person's coming in. You know, so there is that element. But you don't want to be the one deciding pipelines right off the bat. It's hard, okay? I know I say that, and actually one of my students, Andre Perez, like when he came into his job, um, you know, he ended up having to develop a lot of pipelines. And he rose to that challenge, and he was offered lead position within a year, 
and uh, you know it just went he just went from there now now he's you know it's just amazing where he's at so there's a difference between um, doing the job and getting the job and our first job here is to hack and slash and burn and just whatever it takes to get that job to make something beautiful so when we have this conversation about specular maps or not part of it is esoteric and you can let people be esoteric Art, artists are great at esoteric right so you know they might say like you know there's a reason for this and somebody might give me this reason and i'll be like that's great i don't care what makes this model look amazing and if a spec map makes the difference don't listen to any other yahoo in the room put the spec map on because it makes it look better i hope that makes sense your first job is getting the job whatever it takes get the job and they'll forgive you as you know like they'll forgive you stuff they won't forgive you for a sucky model but they'll forgive you for overdoing something to get a beautiful model a beautiful render Teon, how are you my friend it's just looking at uh at your old sculpt in 2019 um of you so awesome and i and i'm doing that myself now <laughs> good to see you here uh shivam absolutely Okay, difficult, but I'll try. Color variation is really important. Yes. Uh, don't listen to Yahoo's. Only this Yahoo. All the other Yahoo's, forget them. They don't matter. All right. Now, we've got our specularity. And, you know, you might be wondering, how do you get that specularity? Looks like there's a lot of detail here. How does he get this? Watch this. I'm gonna go into my channel. I'm gonna go into my blue channel. Do you notice the similarity? Not yet? This happens a lot when we develop maps is you grab channels and you work within channels because uh, each channel has different information. You can see the red channel, it's like almost nothing. You see the green channel, You're starting to see some pores, right? Do you see the pores in there? You see how uh, Jeremy over at texturing.xyz, he does multi-channel displacements. Notice how this green channel is kind of the high frequency, right? Notice how this blue channel is a little bit different, okay? Now I'm gonna just control A, uh, go create another layer and control shift V, wrong one. I always get this mixed up. Doo, doo, doo. Blue, control A, control shift C, Control shift v ta-da all right now i've got let's zoom out so you can kind of see the whole deal that's my blue channel that's my that's the, all the channels now i can go into my blue channel i can go into my filter other and high pass if you hit high pass high pass is going to get rid of a lot of the um a lot of the value so let me go ahead and cancel that because if i just go in and i hit levels If I'm going to go in and do that, I'm actually going to get a lot of the, um, where's my spec? Let's just hit OK. I'm going to get a lot of the bright areas. And, you know, see this, this seems to have like this kind of even tone to it. And the big hint is, uh, is out here. So the way we do that is you high pass the whole thing. So you go other, high pass. I think 15 is going to work. You can experiment, see what works. Once you've done the high pass, now you do your levels. And, you know, there's a little bit more work to do, but do you see how that's working? See how the, this, this, uh, these things have been painted? There's a little bit of manipulation, but you got a nice, easy spec map. And, and I think this spec map is like a little harsh, you know, like you see, we're gonna have some problems right here with these kind of little patches that just got, you know, dramatized a little bit. Uh, and you don't actually see them here. You kind of see these little things and then they became part of something else. And I, you know, I don't like it, but you know, it's a good thing to kind of show. That's how you got your specularity, three easy steps. You're done with the specularity, okay?
the specular map, and, it, and it's going to work great. All right, now that done and said, let's go. We've got um, we've got this. We've got. Uh, okay, I don't really need to see my face anymore. Uh, this we've got our color, our roughness. We've got our spec, and we've got our displacement. So you can also just inside of substance. You can just bake your high and your low. And now you get this. But what we did is generate a displacement out of ZBrush, 32-bit. Uh, I think it was three channels that we ended up doing that. Uh, and once you just create and export this map, it's EXR, beautiful, lots of detail to it. It's not a normal map, though. But I found this really cool program online called uh, Friendly Shade. It's called Normalizer. Right, and so I'm gonna just exit out of these guys here real quick. And the way it works is you go file, open, and I'm gonna navigate to my EXR. That's my EXR. Notice it looks a little bit different than it does in Photoshop because these guys are reading it differently than Photoshop. And, uh, and you know, they're just better at manipulating it. So let's go into the actual pixels. Okay, now what I wanna do, I've got this EXR loaded, and this is a free plugin, at least as far as I know right now, it's free, and it's really cool. Um, let me see if I can find Friendly Shade right here. Friendly Shade, try Normalizer now. Totally free for me. I don't know how long it's gonna be totally free. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily buy this, um, except it's pretty awesome, you know? Um, and so I really like what they do. So I'm going to go displacement map to normal. Like, look how easy this is. This is one of the things that I think is really valuable about this as well. I'm going to set the strength to one. Okay, close that out. There you go. And uh, I don't know exactly where it sent it. So where is my output? Probably right there in the exact same folder. So let's see how they handle um, naming. Uh, da, da, da. Source image. Okay, what did they do? They put it under. Oh, yeah, it looks like they might have. Or I saved it. I don't know. Anyways, here, let's take a look at this. Uh, oh, I'm losing my brain. It hasn't been exported yet. It's right here. Let's go actual pixels. Now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go normalize, and I'm going to set this to 0.5 for strength. Okay, close. Actual pixels. Normalize. 0.25 for strength. Close. All right and actual pixels. So take a look, see if I can get this a little larger. Take a look at the color difference. What's different? Notice that the saturation, the chromatic change is so much more vast, right? So it's wise to go out here, save as, and I'll just say, um, I'm gonna save them as a PSD because not everything uses TIFFs. So I'm gonna save this as a one. I'm going to save this as 2, PNG. I'm going to save this one as uh, 3. 3, PNG. OK, cool. All right, so we got all versions of this. This is where it became really cool for me. Uh, because I was able to kind of adjust and define and, and decide like how intense I really wanted these to be, which again is really important when you're trying to get the job. Because, you know, you want control over making something, you know, awesome, technically. I, I mean, that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, let me check comments here. Uh, Petar, what's the difference between using displacement versus n displacement to normal versus regular normal bake? So what I just showed you right here is, is kind of where I found it the most valuable. Uh, a regular normal bake is going to be fine, tried and true. Marmoset's awesome. Substance Painter's awesome. I kind of liked this 
um, for you know this translation. Maybe it breaks somewhere else because I literally just tried it this morning and said, "Oh, I got it. I got to show you guys that." And um, yeah, you know, this is really neat. And you know, there's other ways. You, there's so many different cool ways to do this stuff, guys. So don't get locked on anything. Don't think anything's the right way, the perfect way, or any of that stuff. Everything comes, everything goes. You know, everything has um, has a winter, so to speak. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, uh, we're getting there, Garrett. Uh, all right. So now, if we have all these things. We have a low res, we have a high res, we've got a color map, a roughness map, spec map, and we have a normal map. We're only missing one thing. The one thing we're missing, and you can get these at texture.xyz. Uh, I'm going to open it up over here. Last thing you're missing is a detail texture map. Sorry. Yeah, is it a detail texture? What do they call? I'll show it to you. Micro skin. Right there. You want one of these. And I'll, and I'll show you how I add it in. Um, it's insanely valuable. I think they come with a normal map as well, but a beer um, on the Roman uh, sent me all these files, and so I'll just have to uh, load it in. And you can see I've already created one version and another version at different intensities. So I'll just leave that you know, there. Okay, and let's close out of this so I don't have things taking up space. Uh, let's put that. Up there all right now what we would do get ourselves over into marmoset and today you know I've already taken 40 minutes to explain the basics of them not to explain this is a lot more but I mean to set you up with the maps and explain what I expect out of a map okay so now we're gonna go into marmoset and we're gonna start to apply this and start to build the system and when you do this the important thing to keep in mind is that if you're having problems, don't brute force this, okay? Don't sit there and if you're having problems and it's not working, you're not able to get the specularity like I got right now, you need to go back. Look at your color map. Did you put the pores in there? Is it just like, is it super dark? Is, did you make everything too contrasty? Check your roughness. Is your roughness, your average value at around 0.45, maybe with a, a 0.3 for the cheeks and the shiny areas? Okay, is that is that where we're going? If you don't have that, you cannot be successful here. There is no magic, at least no magic I want to deal with inside of Marmoset that is going to fix bad maps. Get your maps right get them workable. Now, in Unreal and Maya, you can add multipliers within the shader network and those multipliers uh, give you the ability to kind of fix things. You know, to fix things when you know what you're doing. Right now, learn what you're doing. Learn how to do this in a way that actually helps you and doesn't hurt you and isn't magical and mysterious and like suddenly I have great skin. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this scene kind of over. I'm gonna go file, uh, new. Mm, you know, whatever they show here, I'm great. I'm gonna go in and bring in an object and uh, my OBJ should be here. I think I'm gonna bring in the female low. Maybe I'll get into trouble but I'll bring her in, yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna right click, select the material so I know which one of these, they both say default, it is. And I'm gonna start going through my checklist. So let me get my checklist. Load object, check the scale reference. And I'm using Marmoset 4, by the way. So right up here, show scale reference, doesn't matter where the guy is, just matters that his face is the same size or roughly thereof. If he's not, then you actually have to go into your scene on the far side and you change your imported to millimeters. Change it to inches, whatever it is, okay? Thankfully, centimeters were accurate. We're in okay shape. 
So I'm going to leave that where it is. And, oh, you know, let's turn it off so I'm not looking at it. Okay, and we'll load this guy in. Okay, what does it tell me next in my list to do? It says set up the basic material. So that means make sure, and this is important, make sure your color swatch is white. Because, you know, sometimes materials like from Maya, they can come in and, uh, and you're like, you know, what's going on, right? And it's this little color swatch over here. Let's just set that up. I think there's a thing in Maya, at least the way it does it. Let's bring in the... Uh, Is that the right one? Yeah, it is. So here, in Maya, when you, in Arnold, you actually don't use the color in the color, uh, and you don't use the base, or at least I don't use the base. I set the weight of that to zero, so that can confuse um, some systems. So you know, just make sure that the color is is white. Next thing you do is you got to go into the reflectivity, no, reflection, and just make sure that that GGX is on. That's going to give us our reflective quality. I'm not going to adjust it much. Uh, and that actually, that should be set up. I'm going to move that literally right now in the map. There we go. Uh, and then uh, reflectivity, we're going to set this. We don't even have this implemented right now. So again, maps are going to come in in different levels. Ref specularities at zero, slash it doesn't exist right now. I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, I'm going to make sure that the HDRI, whatever they've selected is like on the face. So I'm pressing shift right middle and I'm like, well, you know, that's not good there. And I like to actually focus on one side of the face. You might notice from the video here, it's like that <laughs> it's backwards. So and I'm dyslexic. So it's like, what? Uh, this is lighter. This is and you know, it just creates interest. It's cinematic. So I'm going to make sure that the light is kind of right there. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is set up the subsurface scattering. So I'm going to go down into my transmission, and I'm going to say subsurface scattering. And I like to do this when it's white, like this. And honestly, if you have that set, if the scale reference is set correctly, one works. If there's some variation, like it's slightly bigger and inches doesn't do it, OK, go to 1.5 and adjust. Um, but I, I can do a little better than just say, hey, set it to one. What you want, and this is true of almost everything. See now how I've got it to zero. There's no subsurface here. You want it to just bloom. Just bloom. You don't want it to be like, hey, ah, I'm blinded, right? You want it to just bloom. So I'm going to adjust it. There. It's just blooming. Now, too much, too bright, dial it back. And you might have to go back and forth. And, and you will have to, you might have to adjust it again, you know, but right, right there. Yeah, see, it's 0.7 actually works. But let's try one. Yeah, let's leave it at one. Because once you put a color map on top of this, things change. Okay, so there you go. Now, what's the next thing? Color map. So like I said, we have a color map, so we will bring that in. Okay, there you go. Now, once we've got the color map, roughness map. So we're going to go down to our microsurface. We're going to say roughness. I'm going to bring in that roughness. I'll show you later why I do PSDs. Okay. Now, next thing I got to do is I got to come down here to my reflectivity and I got to put specular on. When you're dealing with skin, you know, that's really important. Actually, yeah, we can do roughness map. I'm going to do specularity first because that's actually how um, this should be set up so that you can see the problem. So right here, this is not the, obviously, specularity that we want. It looks like basically lathered in oil or... Um, or not quite, not human. So before I go in and I start adjusting any intensity or anything like that, you got to put your normal map in, all right? And so let's bring in that normal map that's set to a one. OK, 
Okay, rotate. Boom. My mistake. <laughs> uh, let's not put that in the scatter map. Let's put that in surface. We're going to go detail normal map. Normal map. Put one in there. All right. Now, we might have some problems. We might need to flip it. I don't know what might have to happen. But I'm not entirely sold on that. I think that's it. It's definitely not the flip. And I don't think X helps me. It's actually pretty okay right there. Okay, now you can't really tell at this stage what kind of trouble you're in or not in. Um, it's even kind of hard for me to tell at this stage, um, you know, if that one was accurate or 0.5 or 0.25. We have a fundamental problem um, right off the bat. I'm going to come over here and look at the questions. Um, right off the bat, one of the problems that we have is it's all like, you know, I have no control over this lighting. So you have to, in my view, get control over lighting. And you can kind of see down here in the lips, like it's too extreme. You know, there's a, there's a function of the, of the displacement map that, um, you know, it's causing me some problems. But again, you know, I can't tell anything with the setup like it is this, this way. And so a lot of tutorials, and we should find them all and burn them all on the internet, will tell you to just put maps or put lights in the, into the sky thing. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Marmoset. Sorry, guys. Will, don't do that. Um, biggest pain in the ass in learning is when students do that. And every single time I have to uh, look at a, uh, to, uh, an image and diagnose it, I have to first, number one, get rid of that. It doesn't have control. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that we need. So number one, don't do that. It really just screws things up for us. Instead, what you want to do is you want to take your skylight and I'll usually actually set the intensity of that down to a 0.1. It's only there for fill. And then I'll create a light and I look at it from above. Not like this. Not like this. Does, do you know what a raking light is? If you know what a raking light, somebody here explain um, what a raking light is. Come in here. Don't do raking lights unless you want this person to look like they're 50 years older. You want to position this so that there is roughly, uh, there's a Rembrandt triangle that we can get out of the, the, the cheek area. Okay. So that means that right now, the side of that nose, I'm not, I'm, that nose is not casting a shadow. And that nose needs to cast a shadow. So I kind of need to rotate this a little bit more. So I'm going to go like that. There you go. I'm going to then press the light button. Ta-da! I have a light. I can move my model. And I look at that, and it's like, um, it's a little extreme because he's too high. So I'm going to come a little bit more like that. That I think I can work with. Yeah. All sorts of crazy. One of the first things I do is I come in here to adjust the bright, the diameter. We've got a problem right off the bat. Check to see if our normal map is doing that. Flip it in the X. It's weird. I didn't have to do that earlier. 
Now, though, you might be able to see a lot of drama, a lot of self-shadowing. Now I'm like, all right, let's take this down a notch. Notice how that drama right there on the lips is a little bit less. You know, and in general, there's just less drama, you know, in this guy. I liked, when I did it, I liked this. Okay. All right, so now we take the diameter. And we wanna look right here on this edge. Just get it to where it just starts to blur. Not a big blur, we, are, we will do something like that later, but I'm just getting it to a blur and it should be around seven for this model. Okay, that's again, not very, like, I need it to be like that. Yeah, I'm gonna create another light here and I'll delete that light. There, that's a little bit cleaner come into that light and I'm gonna give it a diameter of seven because I already attested to that being, you know, the number um, that works, okay? Now, once we've got that, I might go back to my sky and say, well, okay, let's fill this in a little bit. There you go. And then I usually go down to the mode and I'll set the mode to a color. I don't like a lot of changes in the back just because I'm changing something. So we'll work with this number. And so now, you know, we can go in and say, well, we're definitely not getting a lot of specularity. You know, it's either the normal map isn't really helping us much, or if I come down here into my intensity, you know, I'm not getting a lot of, a lot of good out of this. And so it becomes this conversation between these two maps. So I'm gonna put this back at a 0.5. And in fact, I'll use this one that I exported. Something must have been different on my export settings. So this is what we should be seeing at about a 0.5. Let me just check number two. I don't have time to diagnose what I did differently. But I did do something different. Thank God I saved the other version. Okay, this is what we want. checking comments here we'll stop here for a sec uh, artifact can you get good results for skin only with a normal bump map and specular without displacement yes yes you can uh, micro detail I'm excited about the digital human stuff in unreal uh, I've always wondered why the detail isn't just included yeah uh, probably a copyright thing Pitar. Do they have their own? Um, because of resolution, it's more efficient to have small textures that repeat. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Fabric patterns. Okay. This is great. You guys are helping each other. I think you got to flip it in the Y as well. Yeah, I screwed something up. But look, this is also par for the course. And, um, and during a live broadcast like this, not wise for me to go fix it uh, because this stuff takes time, you know, to get it, to figure out what's that small thing that I, that I, I did. Uh, uh, what was the name of that normal map plugin anyway? Have that? Oh, you're talking to the other Ryan. I was like, Ryan, just go back, what? Uh, Nald, X normal, these are all great. Uh, hardware intensive, I have like a lot of programs open right now, Ghost Customs, and um, you know, it's working. Plus I'm streaming and the stream is relatively healthy. Uh, okay, so this is roughly what we would be expecting out of this kind of deal. And when we look at this, it's say our Z intensity, what you want right off the bat, you know, you want a result kind of like this. You wanna take it all the way down to zero You've got your normal map on. You got your normal map on. 
you got your color map on, you got your roughness on, and you've got specular intensity that you set to zero, and you've got one light pointing at this with a little bit of a diameter, just a soft edge, okay, and then a little bit of a backlight. Now, why does this reflection come in over here? Don't, don't sweat this stuff uh, yet. You know, sometimes this is a function of, you know, let's say the diameter here. It could be other things like turning on AO, global illumination. Don't, don't sweat any of that stuff right now. Don't, don't worry about that. Because what we have to do right now is look right here at this area. And we take our intensity up until it just starts to reveal the pores. That's the system. Right there. Do you see how, see how I'm just starting to see pores? It's, it's crazy land, right? Like that's not realistic, but that's okay. This is actually what we want. You want it to get like this. And now our job becomes controlling this because these highlights, these are what make it skin. Without these highlights, there is no skin. It is not skin. So yeah, maybe some areas are a little too shiny and we got to go back and we got to control our zones. But this is this is it you want a result like this, so that we can layer stuff on top of it. All right. So here we've got this, it's looking kind of like um, we want it. But obviously, she looks greased in Vaseline and looks like she's got some poor damage to her skin. So we need to kind of fix this stuff up. Okay, so there's two ways that we do this. And I don't remember what I said was going to be way number one. Um, diameter, I think the first thing I did was add a specular map. So it's between really, and you can see right there, it's, uh, you see, it says add specular map, adjust specularity, and cavity map. So there's these two approaches that we take. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to control the specularity. We're controlling the specularity with a map, or we're controlling it with a cavity map. Okay, so a cavity map, it's one of these maps I didn't talk to you guys about. But let, let me show it to you. That's a cavity map. If your cavity map is not black and white, it's not a cavity map, and it's not going to work. Must be black and white and it's very easy to get okay if you want it you go to zbrush for it you go to your highest resolution level you come into your masking section and you say hey i need to mask by cavity set your intensity at 100 percent depending on the version of zbrush that actually might be zero by default they missed it you mask everything by cavity right I actually have a 12 million poly model, uh, 12 million uh, poly level. That's actually better, but I'm, I'm keeping it low for the stream. So you mask by cavity, you go to your texture map, and and you say um, uh, new from masking. There you go. And then you clone it, and you export it. Just make sure that you understand that here in ZBrush, it's upside down. So if I look at it in Photoshop, it's not, it's not upside down. So why is it upside down here? How does it get flipped here? If you really want to know, under Preference, Import, Export, Export, that's basically a, a system where um, images are flipped. Uh, and it's, if I remember correctly, it's handled uh, here. Uh, e flip switch. What's that one? Yeah. Hover over that, press control. With the E flip map vert activated, all maps will be vertically flipped automatically when exporting. Because we looked at this as backwards, and there's no reason for everybody else to look at it that way. Okay, just remember ZBrush is like this beautiful tropical island, um, you can get on, you can get off, but when you're here, it's a dictatorship, you work by its rules. Luckily, nobody gets hurt. It's just 
you know, some production people have to deal with size problems. Uh, all right, so now we come in here and I'm gonna say take my light. I wanna make that brightness a little bit more like right there. That's good. Okay, I've got a cavity map that I've created. I'm literally just gonna come down here to occlusion, occlusion. I'm gonna bring in my cavity map. There you go. That's what you want. You wanna take the diffuse cavity all the way off. No reason for that. You wanna take the specular cavity all the way off. And you wanna look and say, all right, right in this area, right there, this is the area I wanna control. So I'm gonna bring my specular cavity up and you see how it starts to, what you should see is you should see the, it coalescing. Like you should see the pores appearing to, you know, it, the highlights are shrinking, the remaining area is coming out. And again, remember that with skin, we're not revealing the pores directly. We're, we're revealing the highlight. That's how you make skin. Every time you focus on the pores and the darkness of the pores, basically going to create, you know, somebody who's addicted to crack, meth, just massive skin problems, possibly now a zombie, and, you know, just not good. You're not going to make an attractive female at all because, you know, it's all about smoothness in that case. Even, you know, a male, you're still trying to smooth things out uh, as much as possible. So this is a little, you know, it's a little intense but you can kind of see it. It's like, I love it right here in this area. It's like, it just here, let's zoom in on that. That's what you want, okay? But, it can be pretty intense. So, this is where we come in and you bring that detail normal map in. So, I'm gonna bring in the one that's at 0.5. And small problem. The tiling needs to be set. Okay, set it to point uh, to twenty five is pretty for for this case is pretty accurate. Okay, detailed, done, done. See how that takes all of that and just like really cements this. But this is exported at a 0.5. I need to export that at a uh, 0.25. And that's much better. There it is. And you can see right there in this area, it's like, ah, oh, it just looks so crappy. It looks like CG, you know? It's just like, what is that? And then um, you throw that and it's like, I'm looking over there, but it's over here. I'm looking the wrong way. Okay. So now that is beautiful. That's exactly what you want. You want something where it's like, okay, now it's actually starting to reveal the pores. Almost like you've got this beautiful Arnold render, right? Let me show you this. We are at one hour, folks. That's 100%. That's an 8K render that we're working on, test case. Okay, we come in here to Marmoset and, uh, okay, okay. Some, some problems, I get it. Okay, I gotta work on a couple of things. But, you know, we're getting there. At least it's better than blah. You know, now it's getting there and I gotta go in and probably have to adjust the intensity a little bit and probably have to play with the lighting because that's one of the things that Arnold has is, you know, quote unquote, physically accurate lighting. Um, you know, so we have to hack a couple things together here. Uh, gonna be really excited to see how Lumen uh, works with all of this. 
and um, and I'm really excited to kind of test that out. But that's all like that's all new stuff, and you kind of need to master at least now you need to master this stuff um, to get there. All right. So from a distance, that actually really works. Okay. So now the final thing is we did the cavity first, we did the detail normal map first, uh, next. Now let's go in and see what happens if we add that crazy specular map um, that we put in. So let's go spec. And remember, you can make this specular map, right? It's right, uh, did I kill it? It's just the blue channel with high pass and levels. Okay. Every time you add a map, it just sets it resets the intensity to one. And then let's just bring it. We take it all the way down. And we're going to bring it back until it just starts to just kiss the surface. It's the only way I can say it. I know it sounds weird. There. This is happening in 60 frames a second. You want to know how long that 8K render took? 20, 24 hours? Took a really long time. Like a really long time. I, I left. I think we went somewhere <laughs> overnight and it just rendered. Um, but here you go. You know? I got more work to do to... Um, to make sure that my checklist, which is on this other screen, uh, makes sense. But like, if we look at that, this is workable. And you can go back through this video, watch every step of this, and you can look to see, like, you know, what were the steps that I did, and correlate it with the checklist because I altered slightly. And if you've got the right maps and you hit the right steps, like this is it, you're done. You know, you just got massaging to do at this point uh, and, you know, different things to kind of work on to see if it kind of fits, you know, what you want to do. Okay, and I'm going to, I got a couple more things that I would like to do, but any questions about this so far? Now is the time to ask um, me because I'm going to keep this very delineated to this topic. We're not going to do eyes. We're not going to do hair. Because if you don't master this, I don't care what your eyes look like. I don't care what your hair looks like. The face and the skin and all that looks like crap. Then I know you just didn't spend that week training your brain on this topic. And if you didn't spend that week, why am I going to hire you? You know, you better be cheap. And that's not the position you want to be in. Don't want to be in that position. All right, let's take a look. So we did cavity. So the next thing that I've got set up here on my checklist is um, to create a more dynamic light setup. And I do this almost all the time. Like if we're just doing it in material or if I'm doing it in the light, whatever it is, you really want to add more dynamic aspects. So one of the things that we'll do, we'll take this light and I'm going to have this light kind of spread out. And the way you spread this light out is you adjust the, um, the diameter of the light. So watch. If I go too far, it goes crazy. If I've got a really small light, it's like a, it's, it's like a really sharp, specular light. Okay, but if I want a big soft box, I'm going to kind of expand that until, until the specularity disappears slightly. And I'm left with this kind of wash. Do you see that? The, the specularity is not there. I mean, it is. Like, you know, if we were to come into our specularity and if we set that intensity to zero, there's something there. But it's not a bright specular highlight. It's more of like this kind of soft uh, hue. So let's go there, and I'll put this back. And I'm just increasing it. See, it gets brighter, brighter, brighter. Whew. Washes away. OK? You put the specular layer on until it kisses the surface. Then you increase the light diameter until it washes away a little bit, but still there. OK? Then you 
create another light roughly in the same place. And this light, you're going to set this one to the previous diameter of 7. I don't know if you saw that. See, I'm starting to get some of that specularity right there. So I got to take this light number 2, and I'm going to tamp down its effect by tamping down its brightness. And light number 1, well, I mean the most recent one anyways, I'm going to increase that so that it actually starts to reveal the specularity a little bit more. But now as I move this around, I have a more complex specularity moving around as well. That's how you get that. Like that doesn't look like the normal specularity anymore. It actually there's this like, you know, glow, there's like this bloom to it, then there's like the actual light. That's more realistic than anything else that we can achieve here inside of uh, Marmoset. Okay? Make sure your normal map is good, not too intense. Okay? Make sure your color map is there with some pores, not too many pores. Okay? Make sure that you've got your cavity map. Make sure you've got a simple specular map. Okay? And then you go in and you've just got these basic settings that you're establishing. Okay? Let's take a look at uh, questions. Uh, Hakugen, green channel goes to detail normal map if I use multi-channel XYZ. It, uh, I think what I used was the red channel, but I don't know, my friend. I turned it into a normal map. Detail normal map. I, I literally turned the uh, that thing into a normal map. Do, do, do. West Richens, which part of this is equivalent? to the coat in Arnold. The specular map is what you put in the coat, Arnold. Soft and subtle for every aspect of the character. Yes, Iceman, that's exactly it. Pitar, question, why was there black on the eyebrow for the roughness map? It, it's just, that's what uh, Abdurrahman chose to put. I don't know why. Uh, Iceman, darker. How do you make it look sweaty? Darker normal map. Darker roughness map. Yes, sir. Uh, Remkin, that was an Arnold render. Texture, yes. How do you make detail normal maps? Hockygen, EK, how do you make detail normal maps? The normal map I had there was from uh, Texture by XYZ, and it's from their micro displacement map. And it was, uh, you might have missed that section, but uh, I just used normalizer. So you have to go back and watch how I use normalizer to convert a height map into a normal map. Uh, hello, Robert. Okay, cool. Ibrahim's good. Dylan, is this double light strategy also good in offline renders like Arnold? Yes. Yes. It's also accurate. So a photographer will have ambient light. They will have large soft boxes. And uh, they will have large bounce, you know, sheets and, you know, devices that an assistant holds. And they will also have, you know, sharp spots in very specific areas. Okay? That will happen. And, um, and so this mimics that a little bit more. Okay? I really like how this ended up working out. It's not too intense. Not too strong. So I think one of the last things I'll do is I'm going to come in here and create a fill light. One of the first mistakes everybody makes as a fill light is they do this. Why is this a mistake? Why is it a mistake to shoot a, a fill light right on somebody's face? FFK, it's all here. Just walk back through um, the tutorial. It's all here. Every single step of this has been broadcast.
Remkin, that, that's a great explanation. So we're using Marmoset right now. I really believe in the team behind Marmoset. I think they do an amazing job for students and for us. Um, I do think that there is you know, a lot of competition in this space, so Blender's competition with their EV and some of these other tools. Uh, there's also Unreal Engine, which is getting easier and easier to use, right? And um, so Marmoset just makes things so much easier. And if you can afford it, it's the fastest way right now, um, you know, for me to get some of this stuff done. And I, and I think, again, Blender has some, some competition to it. But um, I, I love what they do. So did anybody answer why no raking light? Estelle, how do you know if your specular map is right? Is there a target value like in the roughness map? Um, we have more flexibility, Estelle, with the specular map because we also have a slider. So if the specular map is brighter, then you would take your intensity even lower. If it's darker, you take your intensity even higher. But it is a legit question to ask, you know, what should what should we get? And so um, I think that this is too extreme. And, you know, I plan on in the final version kind of altering this a little bit. But I am seeing values from, you know, 37 and the 20s to values in the 60s. Okay. This caruncular area right here where you're getting up in the 80, you're not going to need that. But like here in the cheek, you're getting values of 62. The element that's really important to understand about specularity isn't that it is the value that matters because you can shift it. It's the range. That's what matters, right? So for example, if I start ramping up her specularity, like let's just go into this here. You see these dead spots right there. Do you see those dead spots? All of those dead spots you know, that has to do with, it's so dark, and so light, you know, so it's more about the range than it is about anything else. When you get down like this too, it's not that big, but I mean, you can see that it creates these like severe drops right there. And that's actually, it, it, it was affecting us in uh, the Arnold render as well. Um, but I managed to address it. Like you can kind of see right here. There's these like spots where it's just like, whoosh, it dies. It's like, what's wrong with the skin there? And so that's where those areas need um, to be adjusted. Hope that makes sense, Estelle. Remkin, raking casts harsh shadows on the skin. Yeah, so if you Google raking light, they use it um, for lighting things to convert them into, you know, height maps and stuff like that. And, you, you know, it just, it just ages the crap out of everything. So you generally want it from below and from the front because you're just trying to fill this area. So I'm not going to go here. That's bad juju. You go right there. Voila. Okay, I can move that out the side. And I already know what intensity or diameter. I know it's a 7. And then I'm going to take the brightness down and bring it back up. Okay, cool. There. I like that. And then uh, let's set it at four. Oop. Dies off fast. And then I'm going to set this for like a little bit of a, I don't know, purplish color. It's just going to give it this kind of warmish, weirdish tone. And when you start to take the value of this down, it takes the brightness value down. So it's like a multiplication of that. So that's fine. That's going to give me a nice tone um, right there, not just eh, dark value, right? Then the next thing that we got to do is we got to start, if you look at the checklist, we got to start looking at our camera. So I'm going to go into my main camera. And I like to go in and make absolutely certain, where is it? Uh, I. 28, I mean, that's like a fisheye. That's like iPhone. So I set this at 50 to 80. So I'll set it to 50 now. Zoom out. If you want somebody to look appealing, you generally want 50 to 80. Um, otherwise, they're going to look like their nose and their face are huge. Um, 
So, you know, even here, it's like that's even less perspective. So, but I, uh, it gets a little, I like 50. Personal preference, there's no right or wrong, except for 28. 28's wrong. <laughs> Unless you're doing this whole uh, influencer and you're modeling this for Instagram and you want her to look like she's done from a camera like that. So, never mind, then ignore this Yahoo. Uh, so then the next thing we do is we go over here to the post effects, tone mapping. Got to do tone mapping. If you're not doing tone mapping, what are you doing, right? Like, come on, so easy. Come in here to Reinhard. Uh, a lot of times uh, over here at Vertex, we'll tell students to do this ACES. I hate ACES. It's supposed to be better for Unreal, and I'm just like, oh, it's so ugly. I don't care who it's better for. Uh, hi, Hegel. Reinhard. Reinhard makes everything bright. It's great for props. For skin, this one's really good, but you do have to go in to exposure and you got to increase the exposure. It has this added value that it, it, um, it increases the contrast. So just by going to Hegel, if I'm saying that correct, if I'm not, I'm sorry, and then uh, increasing the uh, exposure. You don't have to do anything else. Okay. That in and of itself starts to give it a, a, a quality. And it, it does start to warm it a little bit. It's something about this. So I'll leave it at that. Um, then the next thing I'll do is I'll come into my lights. And why not start turning the lights a little blue? Blue is skylight. You can get some cool effect if you want to make the character look a little sick. See how that's starting to work? You can do that with lighting too. Oh, Ryan, that's cheating. What? Your first job is to get the job. And as a creative, we use the tools that are in front of us. So is a painting not a painting because I used a stick? Well, tell that to John Jasper. Tell that to Jackson Pollock. Tell that to, you know... Anybody else that has made more money than God painting with something that's not a brush, right? Tell them they're cheating. And, uh, and they'll laugh their way to the bank, quite frankly. This one I like as well. Okay, then you can also come into the skin material. You can go over into the specular map and the intensity, and you can actually set the color of that as well. Got to be careful, you know, like, I don't know where we want that. I kind of like that. I don't know. I'd have to sleep on this. Like I'd have to get away from it and see because it's very strong uh, on one side. So I'm gonna come into this guy and I'm just gonna change her color here because I think it's just it's really strong. I'm just gonna have it just, just barely give me that quality. Okay. Now, next thing I'll do is I'll go into my, is it render? Yeah, I'll go into my render. I'm not gonna use ray trace, any of that stuff inside of Marmoset. Um, I still have to get familiar with that. And I think everybody's gotta get familiar with that. It is one of the newer elements. Um, but I will turn on the ambient occlusion and I'll turn it on for the diffuse and I'll turn it on for the specular. And then why would I have it be black when I can have it be gloriously maroon? There you go. And then I can decide, okay, is that too strong? And if it's too strong, then just take the strength down. You know, that's basically a multiplier. Right there, kind of like that. You do this, you master skin, you know, you're, you're almost done. You got hair, you got to work the eyes, um, and, and you got to build it from there, you know, but that is the key essential ingredients um, for success here, all right? And we're essentially done with this part in an hour and a half. If you have the right maps 
and you know how to apply them and how to prioritize the different maps, um, then you will achieve success, you know? Um, so I've got a couple more things to show you, but now is a really good time for me to remind you guys, you know, that if you want to master this, this is just one of the things in character arts that I have thought through and developed a system for. It's what I've been doing for the last four years. Um, I did this for ZBrush. I found the systems in ZBrush that level you up. I found the systems in character arts that level you up and, you know, that help you get there fast. And this is right now, uh, the enrollment for this is going to end on Friday. And the next time we open this up, it'll be at least double because it'll be, you know, there'll be other mentors involved and stuff like that. And it's going to be a lot more of a process um, for you to get into it. So make sure that you get in now and, um, and you get in at this price. If you're serious about doing this, I'm serious about helping you. And we have three live sessions, like a week. Um, I'm doing two of those. Somebody else is doing um, the Saturday one. Uh, and, you know, you're also getting the source content, okay? The goal here is to work with a group of people who are serious and help you all level up and then go back and look and say, like, okay, this helped, that then and, and start to solidify this so I can have a stronger system um, to run people through, in some cases with mentors, in some cases without mentors, right? But I only need this now, so I won't be doing it like this ag again. Um, so if you want in, now's the time. And if you want to do this, now's the time to get me to help you. I help all my students, um, but this is really a great opportunity uh, to get in uh, at this price and with this level of support. All right, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and isn't too like, you know, bop, bop, bop. <laughs> uh, all right, so let me open this up for questions. And then I will talk about one more thing. And it'll be the final thing. And I'll talk about how production art is different than, you know, artists, artists, uh, and art station art. Two different things. Production, art station art. Okay, it's different. All right, let's take a look. So Facebook. Not on Facebook. Wait, wait. The tier line artifact, Vlad, the tier line is basically, you know, a piece of geometry, you know, that's in there. It's called um, transitional mesh. And uh, so we're not covering the transitional mesh now because the only thing I want you focused on is skin. And I don't want to add problem and problem and problem. So... That we have covered that. It's covered in the program, um, but here, um, this is uh, a, a pretty solid focus demonstration on what you just need uh, to present here. Okay, it's artifact. How do you get that? Yes. Okay, artifact. Blend mesh. Blend mesh works. Transitional mesh works. Colored lights. Yes. RTX just works. Uh, just works in what? Maybe ray tracing you're referring to. Is there a method of matching the hair to the skin pores for that extra realism? If you're talking about um, uh, peach fuzz, or if you're talking about beard, yeah, there, there's definitely ways to do that. But not like, hey, Ryan, show me this in five minutes. <laughs> no. Uh, wasn't there a character art boot camp? There was, yeah, three month program. It's coming back, Pitar. This is it coming back. <laughs> Do you have a program for matte painting? Are you reading my mind? Yeah, we have actually, we, the artist just finished um, the lectures. So we are doing matte painting. Uh, Sandra, I'm a mom of a four and a one. What is the least amount of time for a simple character I'd invest per day, thinking strategically about the process? So, uh, I can't give you, because it depends on your learning curve, it depends on how you learn, um, but I, I'll just tell it to you, you know, in, in, in the simplest way. Uh, it, is a, it is a time gig. Uh, it is something where you do have to put the time in. Uh, I recommend all students, you know, 20 hours a week. And 
if you can put more in, that's great. Um, if you can't, you know, things get, they take longer and they also stretch out because when you have 20 hours, you're compounding knowledge on top of knowledge. Um, so, you know, that's the key component uh, in there. And so that breaks down to, you know, roughly four hours a day uh, to three hours a day. And um, yeah, that's, that's the way it is. Uh, I've seen students try to get by with five hours a week still trying to get by and uh and it's a tragedy you know because it's not really a skill thing like i don't think this is a skill thing i think this is a mileage thing and uh and a mentor thing like making sure that you've got somebody who's there with you to be on the up and up with it okay hope that answered the question uh estelle what about the highlights in the ear is this something that needs to be fixed so yeah um, and it gets fixed in a couple of different ways. So making sure that we have a normal map in the ear. And, you know, that they look the way that we want, right? And then the other thing that we do is we go in and we start to control the zones. So when I work with controlling the zones, let's go into my roughness. Um, let's just do this. I will often, I will make maps out of uh, substance painter, out of whatever, and then I'll come in and I will start to add layers to it. Let's just make them super. Uh, oh, I have a 20% opacity. Let's just do that. So I'll go in here and then let's say, for example, paint out those eyebrows. Try not to leave too many big brush strokes. You got that's what you got to be really careful of here is, is leaving obvious strokes. All right, let's just let's just uh, leave it with that, and then I'll say uh, Control S, and it'll automatically try to bring this up uh, as a PSD because I have layers. So I'll save it as six. Go into Marmoset, go to my roughness map, and I just bring it in right there. And you generally got to move it. Be like, all right, so now I made it really white. So white means, you know, not shiny, no specularity at all. Okay. And then if you were to invert that, save it, now I can just come over and it'll auto update. Okay. Just make sure it saves. And there you go. Now it's shiny. That's one of the reasons why I like having uh, Photoshop files here is because I can just go in, do stuff on layers, make some alterations and be like, uh, okay, you know, now I'll bake that down into an actual map. Uh, so hit save, let it save. Marmoset's a referencer, references files. So makes life easy that way. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, let me check my checklist, and I think I'm done with that. The last piece of this puzzle is to help you guys um, with kind of, you know, the overall arc of this. So there is a difference between production art and art station art. Art station art is artists doing work. I'm looking for the comments. Artists doing work for themselves. Okay. And you know they work in production, so they work with different techniques, and and they're bored with that stuff, right? And so they want to go into play. So they'll do things like hand sculpt pores, they'll hand texture uh, faces, you know, all of this stuff. And you look at this art station work, and you're like, oh my god, it's so amazing what they do. Like I want to do that too, okay? But that's a mistake, okay? Because that's what they're doing on their off time, and when you're applying for the job you you know you need to have some sense of that actual production pipeline so i'm going to tell you the secret how did we get this texture this texture comes from let me find it Drive is loading.
3D scan stores female 05. James Busby, the guy's a 3D scan store, and it comes from this. Now, we modified it so that we cut out just the head section, and we laid out the UVs and all that stuff to match. We went through the whole process for that, but it all comes from this map. Now, we have a Middle Eastern character is what we were kind of going with with a beer here. So how do you alter the skin tone? So ideally what you do is you get a, 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 um, a scan that kind of fits your skin tone, your particular skin tone. But in this particular case, let's go ahead and go in here. Here's the, here's the texture map. And we will d digitally manipulate this to get what we want. So I'm just gonna come in here to the curves. I'm gonna say bring a curves in. And I'm gonna go right here to my blue channel and watch what happens as I go into my blue channel. Skin becomes yellower. It starts to become more Mediterranean in that way. What happens if I come into my green channel? I can bring, you know, I can, I can get a little bit more of that red in there, okay? Can I then go into my red and alter some things there as well? Like maybe I can come in like that, start to bring that up a little bit more. Maybe we can get a little bit more dynamic in the, in the curvature. Maybe we can go into our blue. Kind of flatten that out a little bit more. There you go. That's actually a little closer to what we did. Mm, I don't like that one. And then if you compare this one with this, you can see we're on our way, right? And so when we did that, and we had all of those maps kind of uh, established for us, and you know we worked that all out. Did I delete that? Yeah, let's go J, source, scans. We have a body color, we have a roughness, and we ended up doing our own roughness. Um, we also ended up doing our own specularity, which is pretty common. Actually, I think this specularity is pretty uh, much what we saw, right? And then Abdul Rahman's got his own eyes that he kind of built and, and things like that. Um, and that kind of, you know, helped. But then in the body normal, there's some things. But we also had, you know, the 3D model there for us to be able to pull any body elements that we wanted in, Okay. So this process that you see here is actually used quite frequently. And uh, you'll see actually at 3D Scan Store, they're starting to make a lot of blog posts about this to help people understand. So there's two places that I highly recommend. So of course, one of them is 3D Scan Store. And then the other one, the one that is like, you know, the bee's knees, this is the, this is the artist um, of it all, is Triple Gangers. Uh, he's one of the big pioneers. Lee's one of the big pioneers. I've never, never met the individual myself, um, but he's a, one of the people that has really been pushing this for longer than most people even understood what uh, scanning was. You know, He's been out there for a long time. Uh, and now I think he's moving into 4D and all of this stuff. And this is all relevant because you know, the amount of characters that have to get made today is increasing, not decreasing. So you look at that metahumans thing that Unreal did. Who made all of those assets? Who made all of the different variations that they then pull them in for? How many variations did they have to make? You know, they had to make a ton. So how are they getting all that? Are they doing it all by scratch? No, they're not. They're pulling from data. You know, maybe at some point artificial intelligence will do that. It'll pull from data and it'll make characters complete with pores and complete with maps and all of that kind of stuff. It's a long way off, though. The amount of information that needs to be done um, for machines to actually start to learn that, you know, just the amount for them to start to learn is massive. The data set that has to be collected. This is a job that's out there now. It's out there to help machine learning achieve it, which... There are startups today working on that, hiring character artists. There's a reason guys like Geo Napkill are working at Facebook, right? 
there's a reason why one of the best sculptors in our industry doesn't work for a VFX company. Works for Facebook. Well, no. Now he works for Adobe, because I think Adobe bought um, Oculus. But there was a reason there. There's a reason now he's at Adobe. Like, It's because this is a space that bigger players are moving into, right? And this is a space, you know, you don't have to have a degree in Harvard. They don't care. They wouldn't even understand somebody coming in and applying with a degree in Harvard. Like, that would just be weird, right? It just means you just got to learn this and you got to do this. So your first character is the proof that you can do the job. That's what they need. Depending on how good that first character is, they need more proof. Usually they'll need more proof. So you got to have three characters. Those three characters become proof that you can do this and they will then hire you to, uh, you know, they give you an art test, they'll see from the art test and then they'll hire you from there, give you, you know, a training period or a, uh, an onboarding period and then, uh, you know, hopefully you make it full time and, and work from there, okay? But that's really what this is kind of all about is giving you that work, that experience, that exposure and that proof all about the proof okay it's really important you know and the big element i'm going to show you two people here marco lavaz i don't uh lazav i have been blessed to work with amazing artists and for them to only need small tweaks this is marco's work before you can see he's skilled you know but there's some issues with the pants and then when we come in here, this is what he did in the program, much like what you guys are seeing here. This gets work. This has all the essential elements that you need. Let's see if Lawrence um, still has. Lawrence, I like to show Lawrence. He's just, I was really proud to, to work with him um, and, uh, and to, help, to be part of his journey, right? This is the character he did in the boot camp like a long time ago. You can see four years I've been doing this and working on these systems. It's, you know, it's not a joke for me. It's not new for me. It's like, this is my life. I've devoted my life to this. And when you look at these pieces, what's the difference between this and this? And they're like roughly the same time. The difference is he went through the program and he had me helping him understand what he needed to prioritize and what he didn't. And he also had me, and uh, I think it was just me mentoring, it might have been somebody else too, holding him to it and saying, you have to do X, holding him to the checklist. Because the checklist is what matters. They're looking at the checklist no matter what, right? So that checklist is a part of what's important. And you can go, uh, you know, to master's programs. You can go to, you know, big BFA programs. You can spend $100,000 on big programs in schools and colleges. But nobody really cares about where you went, at least not now. What they care is that you did this work, that you did this, and that you proved it. They don't care if you spent 100000 or you spent 1000 Nobody cares. They just care that you did this work. So why are you going to spend 100000 You know, that's like one of my pitches. Why are you going to spend 100000 I mean, I can walk you through this at a substantial discount. And if after that you still want to go spend 100000 well, you know, by all means, have at it. But I built Vertex to be a home where people could achieve their goals without becoming enslaved to student loans. I mean, that's really one of the big parts of this conversation is being enslaved to, you know, some massive debt that you're paying off for 30 years. I'm still paying off my student loans. I'm approaching 50. This, the interest is so low, it's like I don't, I don't see a point to pay it off, but I'm still paying it off. Like it's still a part of the monthly check that goes there as opposed to go to something else. That's crazy, in my opinion. And unnecessary and unscalable. With the industry changing as fast as it is, 
you're not going in five years you're not going to be able to go to college to learn something because the, by the time you're done with college that will have changed your skill set will be outdated you'll have to come to a school like vertex anyways because you won't know the current workflow save yourself the hassle get in there now how's that for a pitch <laughs> Uh, Remkin, we did mention S subsurface scattering is one of the first things I do, uh, and inside Marmoset, so you'll be able to scroll back to that. 90% of characters in the front page of Art Station are in Pixar anime. Yeah, our main um, American game company is interested in seeing this on a game art portfolio. Every game company is interested in seeing whatever it is they need for their next project. So that. They'll tolerate what they have to tolerate, but if you want to work at Ubisoft, you better have some something related to their project, right? Don't have a bunch of anime characters. It just won't. It, the rubber won't hit the rub. The, the road. They won't connect. Got to have, like, I mean, what Marco did, Marco Lavaz, perfect. Uh, do mentors help you get a job? Some, Silent Moon saying, do mentors help you get a job or is it up to you in your portfolio? So I have to tell you, guys, you have, I have to be straight with you, Silent, Silent Moon. Nobody can help you. Like I love it when mentors are like a part of this conversation and um, we have had mentors hire students. It has happened and CD Projekt Red and places. Um, but I just want to be straight. Like nobody can help. I can't help. I can't go to a company and be like, you should hire this person. They'll tell me, they'll look at me and they'll be like, cool. And then throw away that email, throw away that piece of advice, it's gone. There is no labor shortage. They, they have a thousand applications for one job. That's Insomniac. That's the head of uh, one of the lead artists in Insomniac telling me this. So it's, it's always up to you and it's always up to your work. But, you know, of course, I'm here. What's your resume look like? Let's make your resume better to get your chances better. How are you going to interview? All right, well, make sure you've looked at their page. Look at their values. Try to parrot their value words back to them. That's the thing I tell people all the time when they're applying, when you're in the interview. I'm always here to help, right? And when you're in the game art program, that's a big part of what we do, okay? Hope that helped explain that. Uh, da, 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 da. Used to take me three hours. Use the automated tools. Though. Batar, awesome. Yes, Marco. I'm super proud of him, and I keep trying to get him to teach. Uh, and then the last email I sent for him to come mentor, he he ghosted me. So I haven't heard back after I was like, please. Uh, so it goes. He's in a, he, I, his growth was inspirational. Dylan, having spent the 130K, would not in a million years recommend it. I'll tell you, Dylan, like I, you know, I have a very real problem that I have to deal with as, you know, the founder of the school. Um, I have to look at that and be like, well, there is a pool of money. The government will back for tens of thousands of dollars anybody who wants to come to a school at random, provided that I give a certain result, you know, and it's a very low bar. Um, that is, as a business person, pretty significant. Does the company move in that direction? takes like a hundred thousand dollars or something like that I, I don't know anything don't quote me on this but to, to hire the person go through the process quite possibly even more than that um, but at the end of that you have a pool of money that companies and schools are you know zeroing in on right now that's not where my heart is taking this school i want to work with people and not have them be enslaved to financial aid um you know but it it's part of the business of education. They make it hard for schools like me to exist. Um, they want us to do that. It's tough. I have to deal with that every month. I have to deal with that problem. Uh, Sandra, is there a way to contact you with a question related to training? 
if you're in that, of course, there's a way. You're, we're all talking. Um, but there's the email. I just posted it in chat, Sandra. So if you have a question now, uh, between now and Friday, you know, if you're wondering about it, just you know, shoot me an email. Uh, Ian, do you predict all the 3D art will be extinct? Absolutely not. Art is one of the most human things we do. It's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is one of the most distinctly human activities. So if we become extinct, sure. But you're saying in terms of due to AI, what I would like you to think about is layers. AI, like for example, um, art today, there are artists out there, I think this guy's one of them, uh, Kylie Obama painting artist, Kahindi, Kahindi Wiley. He doesn't paint all his own paintings. He's got staff. Is it not art? I mean, you could look at Dave at uh, Coons and Coons. Okay, maybe that's you know I I'd side on somebody who says no, but you know he's got a style, he's got a presentation, he's got a vision, and he has other people working that he's training, that he's working with to kind of help build this art. To me, he's a he's a director as well as a painter, and um, AI becomes a tool, a part of process, and allows us to achieve more i you know and and i think that's important the tools aren't the art so just because we do this all inside of marmoset now doesn't mean hey you know marmoset's the art form it's like oil painting is not the art form egg tempura wasn't the art form our expression is Bleh fuse. Do you think you are ready to apply for a job when you only have one character to show? You always are ready to apply, like apply, apply, apply. Um, people always say hold it. I, I don't understand that. Um, apply, but you, you do need to remember that this is proof. If you can prove you can do the job, you get the job. You need the proof. Proof, proof, proof. There's no set answer, and that's why I believe people should just apply. And you get some feedback as you apply, and you kind of go from there. I think that's what's important. All right, let me check Facebook, see if there's any questions. No, no questions. All right, team. I want to thank you guys for being here. We're at two hours almost. I want to thank you guys for watching this. Let me try to get this kind of positioned. Hopefully we did some work to illuminate what is important about creating realistic skin. There's a lot more on this that needs to happen, okay? Um, the eyes, the transitional mesh, the blend mesh, whatever you want to call it, the hair. There's a million things, and I'm looking forward to helping you on that journey. Uh, and in fact, I got to go now and train some people uh, in this stuff today as well. Make sure you get in join me in the program this is where i can help and uh you guys don't have to look far in my background to know that you know I, i'm dedicated to this i've been doing it for 10 years i've trained thousands of people uh and i used to train exclusively on zbrush because that was the thing that changed people's lives today i train on the whole pipeline because that's the thing that changes people's lives so make sure you watch the first video to be below this, watch that, because that's where I talk about how you have to know the whole spectrum. If you want to get paid to sculpt, you got to be good at all the rest of the stuff so that they'll pay you for this stuff too, right? That's just how it works. <laughs> you got to make that happen, all right? And um, and that's my job. My What I love is helping people grow and, uh, and mentoring folks, all right? Uh, I'm getting older. I don't know how much longer I can keep doing all that stuff. It's a lot of work, you know. Uh, but right now, this is a chance. It's a moment in time. I'm ready if you're ready. All right? Okay. Have an amazing week. 
uh, and an amazing weekend, and I will see you in the program, and uh, take care. All right, ciao. See you, Dylan, Estelle. See you, Ian. Thanks, Ice Modeler. Absolutely silent moon. Will, uh, will you make quick reviews someday in the future? I might. I might. I've just been focusing my reviews on, you know, on the students, the people who commit to the program. You know, that's where um, that work is best spent. It's people who commit to me, I commit to them. Thank you again for sharing all this. Absolutely, Pitar. Absolutely, Ian. Manir, glad to hear. Uh, Manir is already in. Should I prepare anything for the first day? No, I'll shoot you an email probably tomorrow or Monday. <laughs> All right. Okay. Awesome, guys. See ya. Ciao. There is.